Hi everyone, welcome to my channel dedicated to learning Microsoft Fabric. Fikrad is here with another episode and today we are exploring Get Metadata Activity. Uh, in the previous videos we have explored uh, some activities like lookup activity or for each activity that allows you to build dynamic pipelines. Get Metadata Activity is similar in that sense. So it allows you to extract metadata information from cloud objects, which then can be used um, further down inside your pipeline. So what kind of information can get metadata extract? There are some attributes which are common to all objects. Uh, things like item name, item type, or last modified, or exist. So the first three items uh, attributes are self-explanatory. Um, exist attributes it indicates whether or not object is uh, exists in its place. So for example, if you want to check if your table, um, if you have table with certain name inside the database, you can provide its name and it will return, this attribute will return either true or false depending on its existence. Um, some attributes are specific to objects uh, that are selected. So for example, container or folder type objects have child objects which indicate um, any files located inside them. And the table of file type objects have um, other specific attributes like structure, column types, or, or size information. I think the easiest way to learn get metadata activity is explored on uh, file objects. So I prepared copies of certain adventure work tables uh, in the parquet format. Uh, and I uploaded them in my blob storage called data, uh, blob storage container called data. Let me show them quickly. So you can see we have two files for address and the customer files. So I'm going to extract um, metadata information from data container as well as uh, files themselves. So here I have created empty pipeline and if I can, if I navigate to activities tab, I can see get metadata activity. So let's pick that activity and the next step here is to configure its connection. So because it's on external, so it's on blob storage. I am going to choose external here and I'll choose my connection that I have created beforehand. And now I can select my container. Data container. So for now, I am exploring what can be extracted for container level objects. The next step is to configure uh, information, so fields extracted uh, for this type of object. I'm going to hit new button here, which will bring me different metadata fields that can be extracted for this kind of object. So for data container or folder, I can select child items, which will bring you list of folders and the files within that container. I can also select item name, which is going to be the container name. So I can bring item type. So all these fields are related to my 
selected object, which is data object, data container in this case. And I can bring last modified date. Finally, I can also bring exist, which explores existing of certain object, in this case, data object, data folder. So let's save and run my pipeline. Okay, now let's change uh, type of object from container to file and see how, what kind of information we can extract for file types. I'm going to select one of these files, Parquet files. And I'm going to change my file type to Parquet. And uh, if I click New button, now I can see that my I have structure metadata. I can see column count. and I can get size information. Let me save and run it again. Okay, so let's examine the results. Now you can see that in addition to item level information, so you can see we have a file name, file type, last modified. Uh, we can also see this extra metadata information like size, file size. Uh, most importantly, structure and the column count. Okay, now that we know how to use get metadata activity, let's build some pipeline using this um, to extract file structure from multiple files sitting in the same container. So I'm going to use multiple get metadata activities and I'll leverage um, some other activities that we learned in previous lessons. Now let's add for each activity to process each file structure. So I'm going to add for each activity here and I'll build link between these two and I'll say for my items collection I'll use get metadata's child items. Now let's add another get metadata uh, within for each to extract structure for each file. I'll configure my connection first. I'll select my container. Select my file types. Now for file name, we know that it will be passed here dynamically. So I'm going to use expression here. I'll use current item expression, which brings items passed to for each activity. And from here, that object has two fields. I'm going to use name. And I'll use structure metadata information for this. 
okay so save my pipeline and run it again okay so let's examine um, output from my first activity uh, which is was supposed to produce container level information so as you can see it produced child names file names within that container with two two fields name and type and if i examine results from my second metadata i can see that I can see structure for each file. So this is my first activity, first run, and this is for second file. All right, now that we are able to extract file structure for, from multiple files, um, it would be a good idea to complete this pipeline by storing that metadata inside SQL database. Um, inside AdventureWorks database, I have created table meta metadata with uh, three columns. Uh, it's called file name, column name, and the column type. And I'm going to store this metadata for inside this table. Uh, I'm going to use this store procedure, uh, which receives two parameters, uh, so file name and the JSON for metadata, column metadata. And inside that, it, it's inserting that in, in, in this, this table uh, using that open JSON syntax. So it parses that uh, metadata um, and it splits column, and, column name and type and writes them into this table metadata table. So go back to my pipeline i'm going to add store procedure activity and select store procedure and i'm going to select its connection i'll select my store procedure name i'll import my parameters here and they will use expression builder to put my uh, file name to provide file name and the metadata json so file name parameter will be supplied by for each container so it's by collection uh, item name collection coming from for each container so just remind you uh, that, so just show you again this file uh, output from this activity here I'll just quickly show it here so it has two fields name and the type so I'm going to use name for that so I'll click on add dynamic content we'll select current item and then type name, name field. So that should give me file name for each process file. Uh, for metadata JSON, I'm gonna use expression builder and I will use output from the second metadata activity. And in this case, I'm looking for structure. So I'll scroll down and find get metadata structure but before I confirm I will con uh, convert it to string time because this one is in JSON format so I'm gonna switch to functions tab and uh, on the conversion functions I will find string function which converts uh, output from this expression to string type. I'll put here cursor and click string and I'll do a little tweak here in my expression so that to wrap up 
all this expression I previously built inside string function. I'll hit OK. So now my pipeline is ready. I'm going to save and run it again. Okay, my pipeline has completed, um, and now I can go ahead and check results from this table. So, data looks good. And this concludes today's session. I hope you enjoyed, and uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.